Welcome to a very special presentation from the loneliest name in late night. It is the loneliest show on the internet. Sam Roberts now. Of course, you got to hit that subscribe button on YouTube so you know whenever these shows get launched, you got to turn your alerts on here at youtube.com slash not Sam because you probably know. I'll introduce who you are in a moment, but I'm sure you know about the Not Sam 2020 content initiative. Of course, the Not Sam YouTube channel is going to continue to get flooded with content like this as well as new content because all of the wrestling content is going over to the Not Sam Wrestling YouTube channel, a separate YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Not Sam Wrestling. So everybody now has two channels to subscribe to and two channels that are going to get flooded. Both of them are each going to get more content being shoved there over the next year than this one has been Both. in the last year. Both. Ladies and gentlemen, the man to my left is part of the content initiative. People, they've, they've said to me, or they used to, they're not saying it anymore because now they get it. But one day, um, Thursday, Wednesday nights, right? Wednesday nights is the Tomorrow Show. Wednesday nights Tomorrow Show. Wednesday nights started creeping in and people were like, hey, why is there a show on this channel and you're not even on it? And I go, because it's the Not Sam Network. Network. It's part of the content initiative. I had this great network of people making incredible content. And I, if I can have them on the Not Sam Network, lucky why, me. Why not? Why not? And the man to my left is the man who is the captain of that ship, the co-captain now. Yes, co-captain. Kevin Undergaro. Uh, of course, you know him from The Tomorrow Show. You would also uh, know him. You've heard his name throughout the years. Of everything that I've done. You've how been around long, for a long, long time. Yeah, how long? Someone was texting me today. It's funny how far Jim and Sam has come. Yeah. Because now um, the the recent interview with uh, Trump Jr. Mm-hmm. They, you know, when I, I mentioned to somebody. When I asked him if aliens were real. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But the fact that that went so national that all my old friends, mass old friends who are just completely out of the loop on everything. Uh-huh. Um, I'm like, they're not going to know what I'm doing. Well, why in New York? And I said, well, every year we, we come in and we do, uh, we do Jim and Sam and we do Chipmas. And, uh, and they were like, oh my God, the Trump Jr. interview was amazing. I'm like, really? what? You, you know, somebody stopped me in the Sirius XM hallway like two days ago. And, and it's just so random. You just don't, that's why, and you have, you know, preached this for a long time. You, you just, less think more do. You that's just it. go and you do it because you don't know what's going to hit with who. Somebody stops me who works at Sirius, and he goes, hey, it's been a while since I've seen you. And I don't even really know him. It's just one of those faces that you mm -hmm. see forever. And he goes, uh, I just wanted to tell you, your interview with Mike Rowe was phenomenal. And I'm like, it does any, I wouldn't have even thought. I loved the mm -hmm. interview with Mike Rowe, and he was great, but he was like, you know, Sirius launched the app, and I was looking at what was on the app, and your show was one of the first ones, and I just clicked on the interview with Mike Rowe, and it was just great. And Bob, I'm like, well, thank you. Yeah. You know? No, it's really fine. But, found its way. But you were saying, uh, uh, you were talking about how far Jim and Sam have come, but I think you were going to... Yeah, how long have we known each other now, Sam? I was thinking of this today. So, I I mean, I, I remember exactly, and Jess remembers exactly, too. Because, like, so, for a long time, and it's still a struggle for me, but for a long time it was more of a struggle. It was very out of character for me. I'm not outgoing. No, I know. We've, right. We've worked on that, though. You've yes. gotten better. Yes. And, I mean, so... You came in with Maria Menounos to do Opie and Anthony. Mm -hmm. Is I think it was the first time Maria did O and A. It was the I think it was the only time. Did she do it just once? Just once, and it was and it was a little awkward. It wasn't like Howard, where she went right. in Howard and we all played and and did six, you know, shows right. later. Well, yeah, I mean, it was a little awkward. You guys grew up with Howard, one thing, so she knew how to play with him. But also, Howard plays with his guests, and O and A were always like. A little bit defensive, even when they weren't. Well, I think with women, could yeah, it wasn't a not that they were, um, not that they were abusive to women. They just were completely. It seemed like they were very awkward. Well, I mean, it's like women. you know, with all of us, it was the the pretty girl walks in the room, and all of a sudden, your whole like <laughs> machismo cool thing. Yeah, and you know, it happens to me too. Like it it goes out the window, and you almost get like not anymore with you. Well, no, now I don't even care. But yeah. but but I get it. I've been there. 
But you were there and you were like, Sam, it's so good to meet you. And and is this Travis? Oh, that's E Rock. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, like Maria, your boyfriend at the time, now husband. I was like, Maria's boyfriend, but person, like the person who's sculpting her career, is not just one of these guys who comes in and goes, Oh, I love the show. You guys are great. Like he's a fan. Super fan. Like yeah. he knows. And you said, Hey, whenever you're at, you gave me your after buzz card yep. and your cell phone number was written on it. And you said, when you're in LA, hit me up. And I said, okay. And months after that, Jess and I were going to LA for SummerSlam. And it was the SummerSlam where they had Maria wrestling at the fan festival outside of the Staples Center. You remember that? She was yes, in the tag course. match. Yeah. Right. And so I was like, you know, I think on that trip, I, I think I texted like, it was just part of the thing I was doing. This was, at this point, it had it had to be, it could have been 10 years ago almost. Yeah, probably eight to 10 years ago. I was like, I, I texted Steve Austin. I te like I texted the people that normally I would be intimidated to text, right? To just say like, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be out there. And you were, I texted you. It was like the first time. And I was like, hey, you told me to text you. I'm coming out yeah. if there's anything. And you, being you, were like, yeah, we're going to be at this thing. And Maria's got a match. you got to come. We're filming the reality show. I'll get you on. You know, you, yeah. you were. We were and right I was work. like, and I go, yeah, let's do that. I go, Jess, we got plans. <laughs> and so I was texting you, and I had to try to get in. And you're like, well, meet me here, blah, blah, blah. And I, I got my way into the fan fest because I was far from working for WWE or anything like that at the time. But we hung out that day, and 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 your wife is incredible, and she's like the just she gets corporate it. Corporate wife, corporate wife. She gets it a hundred percent. Should really write a book on it. It's incredible. But ever since then, yeah, ever since then we've been friends. Literally since that since that day. day. And so far, side note, Sam. So we had our After Buzz TV Network Christmas annual Christmas party, and I can tell you how many girlfriends and boyfriends, by the way, at that party. Arms folded no, in the corner, no, pouty no. face, oh. totally dragging down. Like, uh, like you, you know, want to pull somebody aside and immediately. There's, <laughs> it's not like let's give it a chance, let's see. And that's also the way I am. It's like I will tell you immediately. I'm like you. Ha Here's your choice. It's your partner or your career. This isn't working the way it is. Because it's that way every single time. Because even if they go like, oh, okay, they're gonna have fun when it starts to get good. But then when it gets really busy because it's good, they'll get even more jealous. And then when it gets really good, they're going to get even more jealous because they want the goodness for themselves. And then you're going to take them out. And instead of just kind of helping you and pushing you along, they're trying to take the attention for themselves. And they, they want to get discovered, but they would never say it or do the work for I mean, I can tell it 100% of the time. In one look. That's it. One look. Because you're right. It's 100% of the time. It, that's exactly how it goes, how you described it. Yeah. And it's I, really sad. And and it's guys and girls. It's not just the girlfriends. It's the boyfriends I've seen. And yeah, it's definitely. Really, definitely. And, and same-sex relationships. I've seen it all. And uh, it's tragic that I've seen. And, and, and I used to feel bad for the people. Uh, and now I don't anymore because that's, you're choosing that. Yeah, you know. You know in your heart. And it's that insecurity of like, well, this is my person. But it's not your person. Right. They're showing it you isn't. that not. It's not your person. It's the person that you're with right now. But, you know. Your person is like, if, like Jess. It was like Team Sam. Okay, this is right. what we have to do. This is how we, you know, and meets I'm, Maria. And then it's like, right. you know, it's just amazing. And then when there's something that Jess needs, I turn around and then Team right. Jess. And when there's because like, it's called a partnership. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But, but that you, was me and Maria forever. Right, right. Series. But, of, by the way, Sam, you know, bracket wrestling series of quick tags. That's it. In and out. That's you know it. what I mean? Working well together. In that's it. I'm getting beaten up. I'm awkward socially. Yes. I don't think we're ready for Sam. I don't think, yeah, you know, you know what? Sam's not even that fun to hang out with. Hot tag to hot Jess. Tag. That's when the hot tag to Jess. Yeah. Jess is making the comeback. That's it. She's making the comeback. She's beating up both guys. And then you get the pin. You of have course. to because you're the star. And then, yeah, at the very Maria end. Maria gets the pin too. Right. And, but sometimes we do work. Yeah. And then at the end, they go, I love them. Let's do that's, something with Sam. I love them. Let's do something with Maria. That's it. Right. That's it. Right. And you know what? And then, and just look at, she has a wonderful home and a wonderful life. I, I do as well. And to me, it really isn't rocket science, but people just get so insecure that they think Sam's going to get famous and leave me. Yeah. You know, or, or get bigger and leave me or, you know, well, it's or also it's about like me. knowing what you want. Like if you, if you want to be the, 
if you want to be famous and your partner is starting to can we take fame out can we just say success success that's because right because it, it does it's not it's, it's not, not show business yeah, it's not anything right but if you want to be successful doing something but you're putting that aside to help your partner that's wrong too like you have to actually want to be the support you have to be right. you have to want to do well, something behind the, the scenes you have to yeah if you're not a team if you're right. not a, you know right. if you don't then you shouldn't be with right. anybody if you're going to be a lone wolf but if you're a team uh, that's just how it goes so and, you never but jess was just she's phenomenal so you never worried about that because you and maria like you are sitting there series of quick tags but you invested i mean you you decided because right you had this life where you were going to be a tv writer yes you I were was very successful I, right when i did it right yeah. And you were going to be a filmmaker. That was it. Yeah. Right. And this is the dream. Life happens. Then you got to pivot. You pivoted. You got to pivot. But there are people that pivot that don't want to and they do it. Oh. But eventually that resentment comes back. So at any point, right, when you are there and you're like, wait, I've met this person, Maria. She's got this drive. She's got this talent. She's got the look. She's, she's got, got the hot hand. The hot hand, That's right? It. You got to feed the hot hand. Right. And you go, I can help build this thing mm -hmm. into just being this monster entertainment right. reporter into this entity that it's become. And then I can do what I want. But you don't get, you never got to a point where you were like, oh no, this is working, but I really am going to have to be behind the scenes. No, you, it, it goes back to what, because you and I are so much alike, it goes back to what you're going doing that serious. You're just always just doing the work. Right, you just you're never, keep... You're never yeah, putting yeah, yeah. your head up. So for me, it's like, okay, what's next? What are we building? What are we doing? You know, so it's like, there is no finish line. There's no finish line. There's no it, finish I, line. I, I, was, I was just telling you, I was at one of Maria's Illuminati parties, Christmas parties this weekend, and um, I'll name drop right now. I was, talking to, I was very proud to be talking to Sly Stallone. And, you know, uh, he's still hungry. It, he talks like he just only made two or three films. And right. I got this project, and I got this, and I and I'm hoping it gets made, and it's uh, but I want to do it the right way, and it's you see that, and you go wow, and you know isn't Vince like that from what you've seen too? Oh my God, yeah, there is no sort of like okay, we've done it, you know, we've accomplished it, and if anybody could feel accomplished, <laughs> right? I've I've gone ahead and revolutionized an industry. I'm in the conversation, in my opinion, I'm in the conversation with Walt Disney and Steve Jobs, hundred percent. But guess what? Walt Disney and Steve Jobs didn't stop until they were dead. And you know what else too about about uh, the Vinces, and I feel like Stallone too. Like Stallone's a filmmaker mm -hmm. and, a, and a brand creator. And if you think of the how many brands he's created, how many franchises he's created and starred in, it, he's actually it's record. Mm -hmm. But you don't look at, you look at Eastwood as the director auteur. You don't look yes. at and you look at Steve Jobs and Walt Disney as the auteur. So the Rupert Murdoch, right, right, as an entrepreneur. You, unfortunately, you and I see Vince for what he is. The rest of the world doesn't. No, they see. You know why? Because they see Mr. McMahon. Yeah, they see this goofy carnival barker. Yeah, and it's wrestling. And it's wrestling. And wrestling is still in that sort of. Yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, in fact, God, it was. A, he's that wrestling guy, right? He does the wrestling thing. I there's somebody right now it, that works with a list in a different part of the business and had a is going to lunch with one of the McMahons one of these days to say, <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to work with you. I like you personally, but. It's not good for our brand. And I'm like, and I said during my thing, I said, with all due respect, and like, we're working together on something, this person. And I said, with all due respect, I, this is a global billion dollar brand. And if you look at what's big on the internet, which by the way, Sam, last time I checked, um, everyone's on the internet getting their content. Am I right? Or the, uh, yeah, the, uh, look, right? I am going forward with a content initiative focused on the internet which okay so that's where the eyes are that's where the ears are uh, and and it's, i don't see them going anywhere else i mean until look at, the look next at thing serious xm eyes and ears are going to the app internet yeah yeah we yeah. all get and it and that's what's going to save them by the way absolutely that's what's going to keep us know. alive yeah so but so when you when you put that together and then you think what is the biggest thing online in terms of discussion it's wrestling oh my god it's, yeah it's why do you think i'm moving again we talk about my content I've decided to take it all off this channel and give it its own it needs to. wrestling channel. Not Sam is now uh, an MCN. What is MCN? Multi-channel network. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's very smart. At AfterBuzz, our network now, I think we've got 11 channels. That's, that's We have a wrestling one. We but have, it's got, I mean, people, know. that way, if people want that specialized content. It's all about content, niche. And, it's, yeah. It's, you know what else I've realized, and it's a little switch of the subject, but I've, re I've come to realize that the... Uh, 
when we were growing up, not we, because you're a lot younger than me, but when I was growing up, it was just starting to get beyond the three or four, three channels. Mm -hmm. Literally, you know, so television, you're saying, yes. And so there was just, there was a limited amount of content. So you could back then be a fan of everything. Right. You literally, yes. there were watch many a, shows you wouldn't know about. You could watch all the shows. Pretty much. Right. Okay. So that's why you could do a Entertainment Tonight or mm -hmm. an E! News for a half hour, an hour and cover everything. Right. And what we found out at After Buzz doing what we consider as 21st century version of E! is that there's just way too much content. So it cannot be covered in one swoop. So instead, we have to cover niches. Yes. So we have to have we have a daily ninety day fiance news. We have yes. a daily Big Brother news. And it's got to be people dedicated to it. It can't be people that are fake about it. It's right because that's what they right. So you want authenticity as well. You right. can't have. I always say the Ken and Barbie hosts. It doesn't mm, work. No, it doesn't work at You've all. You've got to have the people. Everything. So for you, you know, your people want wrestling. That's it. They don't want the Tomorrow Show, that's or they don't want you know talk of you and um, your weekends. You know, they want yeah. wrestling. Fine. Fine. And and then there's going to be those people who you and I both know we, as much as we hate them, don't like wrestling. No problem. So, you know, and, and I mean, listen, you could even do a sneaker channel at some point. That's, yeah. that's how niche it's become because it's just, there's just too much out there. So nobody can be a fan of any, of everything anymore. Right. So no, now people totally. just go all in on and whatever. You can create so much content around this niche that if you are, if you, if whatever it is that gives you that thing in your belly. Whether it's, if it's Sam Roberts that you're passionate about, I can create some Sam Roberts yeah. content for you. But if wrestling is that thing for you, if film is that thing for you, if whatever it is, yeah. you can go so deep into That's it right. and just keep pumping out content that, you know, when there's, when there was, even when you had a hundred channels on television, that's still not enough channels to just go, all we're going to talk about is the flash. No. That's it. All we're going to talk about is the Flash. But now, no, if that's your passion, that's it. I'm all Flash. Make a channel, only talk about the Flash, and you're good. And you will have it's an audience. All about niche, and I, and um, even wrestling. It's like, it, it's like there's people who are it's all Japan or it's lucha, yeah, or it's all I'm only AEW, yeah, or or let's say you're all of wrestling. Where the, is there room for Better Call Saul? Right. I mean, you know, right. it's, so it's. It's it's the it's the good and the bad of what's going on, but I always say like what and when I approach this business, I just deal with what is. Yeah, so yeah. That, you know that's. Yeah, I mean, I had a conversation. It's funny going back to the wrestling thing with somebody that like. It, it, it was around the conversation of WWE and the Emmy Awards and the Television Awards and how it's like you know they really should be considered a hundred percent. And there were people on the Emmy committee whose job it is to know what's on television that go like this. You're doing live television every single week? <laughs> and you're going, where have you been for 20 years? And, and, and by the way, it's like, it's not, it's seven hours of live television every week, plus pay-per-views, plus streaming specials. And one more thing. And that's only WWE. And one more thing, yeah. Sam. It's always been in the top five spot <laughs> right. of it's everything like, on yeah. cable. Yeah. And that's, you know how sad that is when you're a content creator? And these are the people that have held the keys. Well, that's why it's so great that that's ending. That like the idea of needing approval from some higher body is like, no, we'll just we'll just get the audience. Which has always been the Vince way. Which is yeah. Which no, you know, we're, not gonna, was, we're like, not gonna we're not gonna change. Twenty years ago, he was trying to do his own channel before this technology <laughs> yeah. even existed. Yeah, and he would go in and say, why? I, you know why? I don't need. I yeah. don't need you. Yeah. So, so is Vince, like, at what point did you realize, because you talk Vince about Vince God. glowingly. Yeah, at what point, because you're a person, right? Since before you were born. You knew. Before because, you were born. Like, Kevin, as I said, he was, he, he had his career going, and it was successful, and then it came to an end. You pivoted, you and Maria get together, and you and Maria together create this empire that is the Maria Menounos after buzz yeah. every girl you know there's lots of branches coming off this tree now um was that couldn't have always been a vision for you right like I, are you the no type it was like you you just you every day right like we're gonna work what are we gonna something. do next we're gonna do next and yeah. what do we do yeah. better and kaizen which is japanese philosophy of like how do we do better how do we do better which is toyota which is i got that from but going back to vince 
Um, may I share a story with you, Sam, that I think I may have told you before, but I've never said publicly. Have you told the Not Samsonites? I have definitely not told the Not Samsonites. Well, I'm sorry, Mark, in San Diego isn't here to hear <sighs> this. To Rest in peace. Wait, we have to talk about that. Well, go on with your oh, story. Oh, my God. It's just, I'm so sad about I got that. Really sad about that. I one. mean, what a good kid. He came, remember, he came to my 50th? Yes. No, that was Miguel that came to your Miguel 50th. Miguel came. Mark, Mark flew all the way to New York for the, uh, for the Sam yes. anniversary. Remember, he had the hat yes. on. He was yeah, dancing was in the amazing. background. I mean, oh. yeah, I got sad, really sad about that one. But one of the not Sam family, very original members. But the Vince. Oh, but Vince. The so, Vince story. Okay. And so it's. It, it affected a lot of lives. So it could, things could have gone differently for Maria, for myself, and for Stephanie and Hunter. No. Yes. All around this. All around this story I'm going to tell right. you. All right. So it's back sometime in 99, 98, 99. Attitude era in full effect. Yes. No, it was, it had, it was just about to go. It was probably so maybe 97, like 96, 96, 97? 96, 97 maybe. Okay. I would. I had wrapped MTV. I had made a film. I was back in Boston, and Maria and I had just started dating. Because um, you were working, you start. It was, so for those that don't know, it was singled out. You were the head writer in singled out. Yes. Right? And right. So you're in the MTV family and the whole thing. You did you you made a film or you weren't able to. I after that I made a film, but when I was there, right. And you know Chris Hardwick and me and right. and Jenny and Carmen all worked very close together and I, it was great because Chris always gives me credit for the visions I had back then mm -hmm. which uh, I think I know you don't believe in this I think is I'm a little bit psychic now I'm starting to own that because I don't know how I knew the things I knew back then yeah me too uh, yeah so you <laughs> well we listen you, we had you and Jordan Edwards remember going toe to toe <laughs> yeah psychic um, abilities yeah he's a great guy but I mean, he he's a he wonderful man he didn't like that moment no he didn't. No. he didn't he didn't he but didn't you he can't help it if you're psychic Sam I'm psychic you what can I tell you? Yeah. anyway yeah, I, yeah that's what, that's the worst thing you can do by the way when you're talking to a psychic and I'm like, uh, yeah, when did you have realized you had psychic abilities? Because I'll tell you, you know, I just realized I did too. Just so. right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're psychic? Oh, yeah, me too. They don't, they don't, they don't like that. No, no, not so much. <laughs> they don't feel like you're not taking them seriously. <laughs> but okay. So you, you He actually said, I think he said, tell, just tell Sam, please, don't don't fool around with that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you But he was me. concerned for you. <laughs> like, he was like, that's not real. I know he thinks it's funny, but. The dark yes. energies. And I said, all right. Could get. I don't go, no. I'm like, listen, Sam, I, what do I always tell you and your wife? If there was a fire and there were some dragon eggs in that fire, you would pick them up and walk out of the right. fire with those eggs. I see the energy coming. I've added away. I'm psyched. I really wish, God, I, that's a, we could talk forever, but I still can't believe you didn't do Game of Thrones. And your dad, even your dad, who's like more of a straight shooter and. Oh, yeah, when we were. And, so, and, so for those that even don't. even less emotional than you. For, you're so non emotional. Right. And he got, got, he's got less. Yeah, he's and definitely he ran less away emotional. with. He got marked out on Game of Thrones. So, uh, and we'll get back to the Vince story, I promise okay. you. But um, you built this studio with me. The studio that we're right. in, the last time you were in it was when we were building it yes. over 23 hours. Yes. Straight, like Straight. we just sat there all night. Yeah, we, Home mm -hmm. Depot trips. We yeah. need this. We need, yeah, the building, like well, literally. Your dad was amazing. Hammer nails. My dad coming Seven in. Seven trips to Home Depot. Yes. He made for us. Yes, but that's why the reason I bring it up. That's Lila. The reason that I bring it up is because uh, Lila, come here. Come here, come here, Lila. Come here, come here. Relax. Hi, sweetie. Um, you're good. The reason that I bring it up is because that's when you found out he had an affinity for Game of Thrones. Because all I mean back then, that was a couple years ago. Now, you were like. Mr. R, I can't believe Sam doesn't watch Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, did you see what they did over the blah, blah, blah? And you were like, what? Even he's watching? But I'll tell you, I felt vindicated when everybody hated the finale. And I said, thank God I didn't waste my time. And, and, and the Starbucks cup. Um, by the way, and can I tell you the finale, Sam, if you saw the whole thing, you mm -hmm. would have said, it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. It is this ridiculous <laughs> culture that we live in. It's fine. It's literally one of the, it's it's top five greatest series ever created, yeah. and it was fine. Right. It wasn't bad. Right. Like, the Seinfeld finale was bad, and even when you see that over the years, it's not as bad as everyone thought. But this was actually not bad. Right. It was fine. They had six episodes to wrap this whole thing up. Please. Anyway, but your dad was super into it, and that's why I was shocked that you weren't. So. Anyway, but so you were saying about hey Jess, you can send Lila down here. We'll take Lila. Yeah, we'll take Lila. Um, so it's chaos upstairs. You were saying uh, with Vince. With it's ninety six. So it's ninety six, and I at the time 
uh, brought WWE back to MTV. You know, they were... Was that Sunday Night Heat? Yes, before Sunday Night Heat. Yeah, because, yeah, that so when I, So we were, I was push, pushing for guest stars to come on the show. And, and I singled out. I got Adam West, because, of course, I was just a huge fan of his and wanted to meet him. By the way, bef- this is before Seth MacFarlane and, and Family Guy. Um, no, I mean, I just was, love it, because it, it, that is probably not dissimilar from you now forging a relationship with Burt Ward. Yes. Just because. Just because. Because he's Burt Ward. He's Burt Ward. Well, yeah. listen. In the I holy mean, trinity of granddaddy superheroes, right. George Reeves, uh-huh. the late George Reeves, yep. the late Adam West, mm-hmm. Burt Ward. Yeah. And you do have a full, the way I have a gold dust costume over there, you have a full Adam West style Batman yes. costume in your house in on house. a mannequin yes. in your office. And I might be wearing it January 9th, and Maria may be wearing her costume January 9th, her Becker costume. Uh-huh. And I cannot say why, oh, but next exciting. week I will. Oh, that's very, very exciting. I will tell you next week. Um, so anyway, always have like I, I've always had the ability to look ahead. And I was like, guys, we should be working with wrestling. Mm-hmm. In the 80s, it, it put you guys on the map. We put it, well, we put wrestling on it. Okay, whatever. Sure. Put them back on the map right. then. You know, and you know the way Hollywood works. Every 10 years, there's a whole new group of people. So this was all new people, but I was educating them. And I said, you know... We, you want ratings? Let's get the wrestlers. Let's let's rebuild a relationship. So, we called the uh, uh, the WWE, and I think they sent a Sonny at the time. Yes, Tammy Sitch. Yes, who was like hottest the, thing in the world, right? The most downloaded yep. and all these records. And uh, what a what a good kid. It, you know, sad the it, way it happened for her and her boyfriend Chris and Louis Spicoli, who's mm-hmm. also gone. Yes, do you remember him? Of course I do. Rad Radford. And we yes, and we but we we held out and said, but we need Mr. Backlund. What? And they exactly, and they were like, but we're we'll giving send, you Sonny. We'll send Shawn Michaels. We'll send this. We'll send nope. Because we wanted a male and a female. I'm like, nope, we need Mr. Backlund. So you wanted Sonny and Mr. Backlund. And we ha- well, they offered Sonny. We said, listen, we'll work with any of your talent. Let's work together. Let's do something together. Okay. So they sent Sonny. And then we said, you know, okay, and we want Mr. Backlund. And they're like, no, Shawn Michaels, uh, Mr. Backlund. Okay, how about Razor Remote? No, Mr. Backlund. <laughs> and then it was like, well, we, we, we just can't. And it was like, and, and I, the, my boss at the time, who was great, he, mm-hmm. he was he was let me run lead on it, but he was. That's great. not a shocker. He was a tough. He was a tough New Yorker, so he was great with them. I was like, no, no, we're working with. The, I, I'm, and he loved the Backlund videos. How funny he was! Mm-hmm. Like, no, no, he'll be he'll be great with the kids. <laughs> and so I think. It was, oh yeah, because this is when Backlund was going through his thing. Mister Backlund. Mister Backlund. Everybody had to have perfect grammar. You had to be able to name all the presidents. You had to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The Japanese have one hundred percent literacy. <laughs> that's what I learned back then yeah. that's when you had to recite him all the presidents to get an autograph right uh, he learned I think how many new vocabulary words a week yeah it was right yeah yeah. he was he was drinking, special drinking only carrot juice yes yeah so he ended so Shane got on the phone with my boss and finally said okay I'm gonna tell you the truth he's he's out there mm-hmm. you really want if you want this guy here I'll put him on the phone Hello, and so, <laughs> and, uh, and so we got him out, and then it turned out he was incredible. I'm sure. And everyone, once the once the red light comes on, he's great. Yeah, he just came and you alive. got Mr. Backland, Mr. Backland, yes. and then Jenny, who we didn't think would be in. They were like, Jenny's not going to be into this. The nun falls down every single time. I don't know why I keep putting the nun back up. Okay, she, you know John Edwards would say that that's something. I'm just saying, Sam. Yeah, I'll tell you. You want to know what? <laughs> just us knocking the table. Yeah. Okay, John Edwards. It's the fact that it's a female, so she's got weak ankle articulation. That's what it is. There's your psychic abilities. Wait, who? Wait, but what? Why do? What nun is this? This is the nun from the film The Nun. Oh, interesting. From the uh, Conjuring series. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's scary. (laughs) So you have. I'll put her in the box. I'm already frightened. So you have. uh, (laughs) There we go, John. I think we're safe now. Okay. So you have. uh, (laughs) Wow, I felt the spirits go through me. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't worry. Just holding it. Yeah, everything is. Everything that's in the box is safe. Um. So you've got Mr. Backland on the show. And uh, and everyone was like, you know, Jenny's not going to be into this. Uh, you know, Chris, he's good with everything. So Chris ends up thinking he, he's a genius. This guy's brilliant. Mm-hmm. He is so much fun. So Jenny ended up getting physical with him. She was she jumped on his back. The two of them spin around. They're knocking over things on the set. And when I got the death stare from the executives at MTV... Because Jenny, you want to talk big, as big as Sonny was in wrestling. Oh, Jenny was huge. I mean, my God. Right? There was a Jenny meter in Entertainment Weekly every week 
to ranking how big she was. In the I business. sat there when I did her sh- when I've done her show on Sirius. I sit there thinking about it as I'm doing the show and talking to her, and she's laughing at the things I'm saying. I go, "Do you understand?" Have you, you said that to her? She I don't loves know. You, by the way, if you told teenage Sam Roberts, do you just be sitting there cracking up Jenny McCarthy on the radio? Like, forget about forget it. Forget it. You're right. done. You're a success. But with you, that goes to everything, Vince. Because I never, I never grew out of anything. Uh, yeah. Just kept working towards the same things I worked towards. When I was five. The rest of the world also hasn't grown out of anything, but the difference is, is you work. Yeah. The rest of the world is, you know, it, it, that's, that's well, a whole say, other issue. I say on this show a lot, something I learned a long time ago. There's a lot of hot dogs in this world. Not too many Sam Robertses. <laughs> But wait a second. Well, 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 why do we have to knock? Hot Dog's doing great work for you. He's doing fabulous I work. I thought you were going to say you learned a long time ago, <laughs> win if you can, lose if you must, but always, always cheat. cheat. <laughs> yeah, I learned that too. Right? Okay. So again, I always, I've always, i told you forever, life wrestling taught us everything a, we need to know in lesson. life. Every lesson. Every Good lesson. Good versus evil, the heel turn, do all of it. you know how many times I've looked at Jess and I've said, Jess, all you need to do in a corporate environment... <laughs> All you need to do to survive is no sell and baby face your way through. No sell everything and baby face your way through. If you do not sell anything, nothing's bothering you, nothing's getting to you, you don't even know anything's going on, Oof. and you just smile the whole time, you'll be absolutely I, fine. We're always debating this. I think you have to be born with that, which you are. I mean, it's a simple philosophy. I know, to you. I know, no. No sound. applying the philosophy. I know. And baby face. So it's... And so, that thing that comes into you and goes like, like if you, like, Sam, I need you to stay after. That thing that creeps in that goes like, well, I got to... Goodbye. You got it. No sell. No sell. Baby, baby face. face. That's it. Your entire way through life. Okay. Okay. And then is there a heel turn, though? Never. Because you stay face forever, or forever. no, or is it part of being a heel to to play face? Well, yeah, I mean, because I love the Ric Flair strategy, which is, which is like friendly, 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 and then the knee to the balls. But yeah, I mean, look, if you, you I'm can, not saying I apply that, but I admire can, Rick for that. Yeah, but how many matches did Ric Flair win? Yeah, he talks about that a lot. Man. Almost none. None, right? Yeah, probably Almost in the none. '70s and '80s he did though. He always he? lost. He always Even then, but he had the belt though. Well, he went to time limit draws. He was. I mean, he talks about his finisher. He was like, "Yeah, my finisher was a figure four. I never finished anybody with the figure four. But why was that? He's a heel. Nobody pays money to see the heel win, <sighs> unless you're trying to come back. And I mean, what are you gonna? You gonna burn the town down? You know what I mean? You got to be able to come back to the town. Unless you're Brock Lesnar. Well, I mean, that's debatable. Okay. You know that that's what's got. Here's where I'm super Mark and I get lost because I go there and I see Brock and I shiver and I see him beat people and I go oh my god and then Polly is getting us all like riled up and but I'm I mean, so old school like I, I I think so I don't look any further than that he looks like he is a champion yes. and that's it he looks I've, like he could ragdoll anybody I love that that's what they do with Brock I feel like because of that every time somebody beats Brock it becomes a huge deal right and it, and it's even better but there are plenty of fans that are still mad. Six years later, that Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker. There are fans now that if you said six years later, do you get why Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker? No, that was dumb. No, I hated it, and I hate it to this day. But you know what? Maybe that's good, because Brock Lesnar, same way you can babyface your whole life, not too many people can stay a heel. No. Brock Lesnar can. Yeah. And it's good. Yeah, I, I I'm good. I like it. I I. I love it. Okay, so we stay, so we no sell. And, and baby, we baby face. it's funny, you know, Daria Baronetto, aka Sonia Deville, yes, stays with us every now and again. She stays in LA with Marie and I, and she'll throw out all these terms like that, the no sell, this, that, and we're like, what? And she has <laughs> so to explain funny. to us. He's like, no, no, that's a no sell. That's a okay, right. interesting, right. Yeah. yeah. But you learn uh, wrestling teaches you everything. Everything you need to know. Yeah, Vince. T- figured it all out a long time of ago. Of course, it's life. It's not wrestling. <laughs> That's what I've always thought. Right. Everybody, so, everybody so, sits around. And they talk about how fake wrestling is, and then they talk about their little <laughs> politics or their news show or their no. reality show. Or they're like, "Yeah, wrestling's fake." But this week on Ninety Day Fiance, yeah. I'm like, "Okay, cool. Tell me about and it." You know, it's bad because most of these shows, you even Ninety Day Fiance. Now I'm noticing more moments that are being produced. Sweeten it. And it just uh, sweeten it. 
when they come into the room and they'll ask a question. So, <laughs> like, oh boy, the producer asked. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah. So back to our story, I guess. Yes, yes, of course. We dive. We dive. So, so they made a big stink. The executives were horrified that the biggest asset the company had at the time was Jenny, and she's literally on Mr. Backlund's <laughs> back, being like they dragged that kind around, of insurance, knocking yeah. things over. Yeah, and uh, but when the ratings came in, they were like, "Wait a second, what? We're onto something." So, um, Shane. And 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 MTV starts speaking. Shane speaking, O'Mac. Shane O'Mac. Okay. And then and uh, and then you know in no time, um, heat came, mm-hmm. and uh, and their relationship got really strong again. And and Shane and I had stayed in touch. And he said, you know, oh, after I'd made my film, and I was like, I'm not on MTV anymore. I'm like, you know, you, you guys need writers. That's what I do. And I said, and I promise you. It. And at that time, I go, no one knows your product better than me. And so we went in. He said, "Yeah, come on down and um, and meet my dad." So I went down to to meet with Vince and Shane back then when you could. Sure. You know, and it was interesting. It wasn't a public. It was still a family owned business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the company was. Um, it looked. You could tell it was not in the best shape. It was very eighties. The decorations. Sure. The, the, they hadn't done the big renovation yet. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. The, like the the logos were faded and chipped, and there was like Vince's office had like zebra striping, sure. like carpet on the wall. It was before, right before the Attitude Era. Yes, yes. And you could tell like they were they they were hurting. Yeah. And um, and so first thing, of course, I wanted to do was go into the vault and see all the matches from the seventies, which of course <laughs> Shane was nice enough to allow me to do. Uh-huh. I got to see Chief J. Strongbow, High Chief Peter Maivia. It was. I was a kid in a candy store. But then I went to meet with Vince and I pulled up probably like 20 pages. Of stuff you had written? Of ideas, yeah. yeah. Okay, we can do this. We can do that. And, and I remember some of them. And the one that I, re- one of my favorite ones was that where back on West still popular as a heel, I said, he still has the 19, the, he told me he has the belt from the 1970s, the skinny yeah, WWF yeah, yeah. belt. It actually you know looks like one? a belt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I said, he still has it. It's in pieces. Because uh-huh. uh, Superstar Graham ripped it apart on Right. Him. I'm like, why don't we put it back together? And I said, let's randomly have him start wandering out <laughs> with the belt. <laughs> and he's he's now under the belief that he is... It's 1978. And he's the champ. Yeah. And when you, as Mr. McMahon, are like, get, him, get this maniac out of here. <laughs> Your lawyers advise you that this is post-traumatic stress disorder, that the company's responsible... <laughs> And it's much, much like, uh, much like. And that a, was a time where you could do a PTSD angle on television. Yes. Like you could not get away with that now. No. But you could, you could back say, then. yeah, yeah. And, they and, were still calling sneak attacks Pearl Harbor attacks. Pearl Harbor. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a side note. Yeah. Lou, Lou Albano did say the Japanese race is the superior race, and so, he spoke fluently too. So, so <laughs> did we test the, that he spoke fluently? Well, he said, I am fluent. <laughs> and then he went and he spoke. You can pull up the video. You did he, can't, did I don't he blink you. when he said it? When he said it? No blinking. Well, then Ever. he must have been telling the truth. He was totally telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so so I said, you know, and I said, much like, I, I, as I pitched it, I said, you know, much like a sleepwalker that you don't want to wake up, they'll be advising you, you don't want to tell him that this isn't true because his condition will get worse and every now and then it'll lock the chicken wing on somebody or who knows yeah so you get you know nervous breakdown and again you're gonna be more liable so just let's play along right so bring back people now you get every week you bring back people from the 70s Don and Morocco 80s comes back and but they're all fat and out of shape they're not like <laughs> him and he's and now matters are getting worse he's killing these guys <laughs> yeah. but he's playing along and he's <laughs> he thinks he's the champ and he's all excited i go and then it happens right somehow there's a backstage era, and when he's going to the ring, he bumps into Michaels, who's got the real belt. Mm-hmm. And, and he's young, and he's confident, yes, and he's good looking. And this and, is the whole like Vietnam flashback, yeah. PTSD. He relives it all over again, Yeah. and now you have a feud with them. And, and, Vin, and then you actually do Backlund versus Michaels. Yes, and he was like, this is genius, genius. What else you got? And so we're going. And so I said to him, okay, um, I said, here's the other thing. You have, you have another asset in your company you haven't you're not using it's like well, what's that i said um your daughter stephanie you didn't say that i did say that <laughs> i said i know you do because i said i'm from boston i know she went to be you we have friends in common i was like 
and with all due respect, she's a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's an asset you have that's not going to cost you money where you've got all these people leaving. I was pretty upfront with them. Yeah. You know, all these people, and they go, and if you keep going dollars to dollars, that they're going to bury you. Yeah. You know, so you have to do what you always did, which is bring it up in-house. And he loved that I mentioned. I said, do you know, um, do you know the very first time, Vince, that you were, you were actually um, were physical on camera? Do you know, Sam? The very first time? I mean, I, I think it was. He took a bump? I thought it was after. It was the 1977 Manager of the Year competition, Sam. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. I thought it was after. No. Huh. It, it came later in the 80s, but in 77, at the very end, Lou, Lou Albano thought the Wizard was eliminated, Blassie was eliminated, and then it was between Lou and Al Arnold Scullin, mm -hmm. and uh, Lou obviously lost. And he just picked... one baby face manager. Yes. <laughs> Sam, why are you going to ruin it? I always have to ruin my childhood, my fantasies. So anyway, so Lou picks up the trophy and smashes Arnold Scullin over the head. Uh -huh. A little shrapnel hits Vince, and Vince and Arnold go over the top rope. I got to look that up. So when I put so told him, his face was like, at first was like, is that true? And then he was like, oh my God, I remember that. Yeah. His first bump. And then he was in. Then so then I had him and so then I but I pitched I said you've got I said so what you want to do is, I said, go, classic Shakespeare, I said she needs to date someone on the roster. I go to that's kind of a ballsy pitch when none of this has happened yet. None like of the it. McMahon family aren't characters. Vince at this point is not even the out of the closet owner of the company. No, well, I think he must have been doing something because I wouldn't have gone that far. I think he was starting to to come out a little bit. Okay. I think so. Okay. Because I don't think I'd be that ballsy. Right. But but I said she's got to 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 spite you, she's got to date somebody or someone's got to be inappropriate and hit on her. And I go, but eventually she'll be with that person, to to take it out on daddy. And it was two weeks later that that began. Oh, okay. Hunter and Stephanie. Right. So then li literally a week or two later. Yeah. So they the first, started that storyline. That makes sense. So the singled out thing, that's like 96 ish, 97 ish. This meeting is more. Yes. Yeah, so 98 ish. Yes, yes. Yeah. That makes sense time wise. And so then obviously look what happens, you know, yeah. and then, you know. So why didn't, but if you. Why didn't I take the job? So you were offered the job. So. I met some so so then I met someone else in the company who <laughs> just looked at me and was like, Okay, this guy's gonna totally take my job someday. <laughs> and I knew it. Who was it? I'm not, I can't say. And I you don't want me to say either Sam, okay. for your sake. You oh, don't, okay. You don't no, want that, me to say. Wait, so you met somebody in the company that looked at you and was worried that you were gonna take their job. I'm sorry to tell you. New. No. New. No. Yeah. And I so, mean, come on, I'm friends I'm like friends with Shane. I just yeah. pitched all this stuff. Like it was supposed to be a ten minute meeting with Vince. But so it ended up being like a, a two hours. You had this interaction with this person who you won't say who it is and probably shouldn't for all of our sake. Yeah. Um and then do you go Well then I'm not gonna I'm not going to pursue this. Or... No, no. So, so then I will tell you at the same time, which ties it back to Maria and I. I just started dating Maria. Ah, so you and are at a crossroads even, in your life. Yeah, and even in the meeting, I mentioned I go, listen, I'm dating this girl. She's going to be a big star. I said she'd come with me, and trust me, it's not me trying to get my girlfriend over. She's going to be a really big star, mm -hmm. and she will be an asset to the company, and she's great. Like you know, and um, by the way, it's so funny. Years and years would go by, and everything you said was right, including yep. Maria, Maria being a part of the company. I don't know. I don't know. Why, like I said, that's why I think it's like John Edwards is psychic. Why would I? How would I know this stuff? I mean, look. Sometimes. I knew, by the way, I knew it about you, Sam. I mean, come on. Like that one's that's obvious. an easy one. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's an easy one. But we've talked about how many of the old miserable comics from back in the day. Do not do, do, said you were not going to make it on Jim and Sam that you'd be gone in a year and I was laughing I'm like so what we see as obvious was but I not to the I, other people in our business I don't think it's that you are that this is an example of you being psychic I think it has more to do with you being unselfish in the way you look at people you don't get blinded by any sort of insecurity you kind of look at everything for what it really actually is. And that clarity 
I don't think yeah. is something that a lot of people have because they're so wrapped up in their own stuff, Probably. positive or negative, yeah. that they miss what's right. actually happening. And I me, think. It, yeah, I know. I think you're right, and I think you're right, and it and it, but it shocks me because it's it is obvious, and I could go please for three hours and why with you is going to be obvious but but you also like one of your hobbies and i'm the same way is like you will just get onto a topic or an individual and you'll just deep dive you'll just become obsessed with that individual not for your own not to you know do anything for yourself but just because you just become interested in them you do the wikipedia yeah. and the youtube and then this you've called me before and you're like sam and 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 you you just start talking to me about somebody. It could be somebody I've worked with. It could be somebody that I haven't worked with. But it's just like, you know, you don't look at people through this lens of yourself. No, you can. You have the ability to leave yourself and just look at them. Did we not learn this from wrestling? To bring it back of to course. all the life. Okay, and can I give you the greatest example? Which because we're from different eras, mm -hmm. you have your people who on wrestling showed you this. I have mine who you are very. At times, critical of who? Captain Lou. Look, I'm always <laughs> went deep when the he was with the Moon Dogs. He became a Moon Dog. Look how he dressed. Ooga booga. Ooga. And <laughs> no, that's true. Right. That's and then true. when he has, I'm not critical of Captain when Lou. When he has Fuji and Saido, wasn't about Lou. He right. was in the Hawaiian shirt with the the kimono he'd be wearing, or was it those knee high right things with the knee pads and the yes, and he's speaking fluent Japanese. I think Captain Lou's great. I'm not ready to say he's the greatest manager of all time. No, but my point is agreed. Different era. Mm -hmm. I think that's Heyman. To but I don't know how you feel. I he's think, an advocate. Which I why he's just unbelievable, <laughs> and I gotta get. I you have to help me get closer to him because he he was with Lou and Wizard and uh, yes, Blassie. Yes, he was. Yes, like, oh, you guys would just the conversations that you. Oh, have. I have to. I don't know how much it's gonna cost me, but I'm writing the check. That's a make a wish thing for me. I yeah, have to sit you with did, him. You've earned it. <laughs> yes, but Lou. I will. That's one of my favorite things, by the way. Like you know, as a kid who grew up with ECW, I will, and you know, this is not like me. No, it's not. But I will be backstage and go up to Paul Heyman and I'll go, Paul. What about Sabu? I go, whose idea was it for Desperado by the Eagles to be Terry Funk's music? <laughs> I've not, literally asked him. That's I mean, again. and his and he smiles and he goes, I did all the music and I go. Yeah. He's, it was just because it's the, one of the most brilliant when you got this ECW locker room and it's pure 90s aggression, gangster rap, out of the box. metal, rock, Everything. young thing. And then Terry Funk comes out, this 50 year old man and the Eagles are playing. Why don't you come to <laughs> your senses? And, the, and he's the biggest baby face in the company. I'm like, it's just, I got goosebumps. So I, I mean, like, and, and why Paul to me is more, I mean, I idolize Vince, but I relate more to Paul because Paul's sloppier. He's purely creative, He's more right? the underdog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like he makes his mis scrappier. And he'll make his mistakes and things, whereas Vince keeps ascending and getting... I can I would make the same mistakes Paul did, but man, like what? But you know for what? what you, little you, he had to work with. You know what, what else you do, just like Heyman? What? You get back up, dust yourself off. Always. And it never happened. Always. Because the past is the past. That's and... it. And but notice him. He's another one. He doesn't blink. Nope. Like you told me about him. Like he thinks Brock is the greatest wrecking machine on the planet. Yep. Which again. And he's convinced me. He's convinced you. I don't disagree. Yeah. But. Captain Lou opened the doors for all of us, but same thing. He just was blindly look. He would look at people. He would see them and be like, "All right, I'm all in to get them over." So, that was me. Uh, so I didn't follow up on the job, like I could have, because you fell into Maria world. Yeah, not in a negative way, yes. in a positive way. And for me, a lot of the trip down there was a bucket list thing. Sure, I really just wanted to go to that place, meet with him, you know, do what I See, did. That's the thing. I knew it would stick with me the rest of my life. For me, I never leave the bucket list. Meaning what? You like you that stuff. Keep that's, following through. That's it. I love that. Like the stuff that's like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to go to this just, just to do this one time? And it's like, yeah, that would be cool. It'd be even cooler to do it twice. I know. And what about and three way, times? And Sam, but this is why you've been able to commit whether it was ONA or now radio and wrestling. That's why you've had success. Whereas... With me, again, like Captain Lou, uh, the minute the Moondogs are no longer over, 
I'm, I'm now I'm Next. a Samoan. <laughs> now I'm a Samoan. I'm from because I'm, I'm, you're a survivor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I am. I just probably ADD. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so that was our thing. And, and Maria actually said she goes, I I keep meaning to tell Stephanie. She said like, I got a really funny story to tell you about ever that. Yeah. F- why Kevin is somewhat responsible for your relationship or could yeah. be. Well, look. I mean, what do you have? You and you and Maria. I like what you guys have done. Of course, uh, is Maria doing the New Year's stuff this year or not? Fox no? New Year's Eve. Yes, she, she will is. Be doing with Steve Harvey. Is that the third year in a row or more? Third year. Third year. Massive uh, uh, fitting at the house. I, I mean, like 12 racks of clothes brought in for the whole ordeal. Two years ago was the wedding? Two years ago was the wedding. Right. You Live were there? on Fox. No. I was I there called, the next. I called in. You called. <laughs> you called. And you can go back. It's still on the channel. I think it was the first New Year's Lonely Eve. It was, I think the, this it year was, will no, be the, it was the inaugural. Yes, yeah. it was the inaugural New Year's Lonely Eve. And right, I mean, minutes before, maybe two minutes before you got on TV to get married to Maria Menounos, you, as you were being mic'd, I remember you being mic'd. Yes. You were on the phone with me on the air going like, I just wanted to check in with New just Year's Lonely sure, Eve. Yeah, yeah make sure everything's good. Um so you've got that like in the near future, but yes. it feels like, especially with Maria's podcast and everything that you guys have going on with AfterBuzz, which is like exploding, as you said, yeah. so many different channels. It's it's really blowing up. The studios are amazing. I, Jim and I use them when we're down there in LA. That's where we broadcast out of. Um, what do you have on the horizon? Like, what does this phase look like for you guys? Um, like, because I don't think. I want to see, you know, my big thing is even for young hosts or even stars, my big thing is like stop thinking like a star and I want you to think like a star entrepreneur. And by the way, right. back to wrestling. Right. The Rock, Cena, think of who Vince I mean, has raised. The guy's working on the indies. You know what I mean? Right. Who, who are like sitting there like, yeah, they're getting paid to wrestle, but they got their gimmicks with them. Mm-hmm. They got their online presence. Right. They have their YouTube channel. Like they're creating product lines, a whatever. brand. They're creating products. So, yeah. Are, yeah, yeah. So for Maria, you know, I, I've said to her, you know, when you think of Jessica Alba, you think Honest Company. When you think of um, Reese Witherspoon, you think of Hello Sunshine. And mm-hmm. I said, you know, what we've not done is connect you to after buzz you know you're sitting on a network that produces 150 original hours of content a week you're in all these different countries we have tens of millions of downloads on audio and then views and video um uh, I, I think i don't know if i said it on the air but I, I told you we have an all um spanish speaking channel with the very first do all spanish speaking after shows we actually Genius. do raw in spanish so uh i mean our raw one of my hosts came up to me that day and paid me a great compliment he was like you know we have more hosts here than the there are players in the nba really which is a really cool thing and you know even though i am the old white guy um 70 percent of our host roster is minorities and females and none of it was by design right those were just the ones That's just who that fits. came and w- wanted to be part of it and uh and made it through all the auditions and so stuff. who are some of the let's talk about some of the after buzz because people you know everybody talks big but who are some of the people that graduated from after buzz because it really has become in the time that i've been around even just watching the people that I knew as after buzzers yeah. kind of move on. We talked about Daria, Sonia Deville. She was an after buzzer, correct? Yeah, she started with us. And, of course, uh, Kathy Kelly was the after buzzer. She was the one. And now she's like, you know. Huge. Ebony K. Williams from Fox. Huge. Uh, Beth Bears, two book girls. Oh, uh, wow, yeah. Um, who was actually before Kathy. Really? Like literally by, by like a month or two when we first started. Mm-hmm. Roxy Stryer. Of course. You know, Roxy is, what a fan base Roxy has developed over the last year. Yeah, yeah. She's the little engine that could. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now she has her show, her morning show on Collider. I'm which incredible. She's the sole host of, which, not sole host, but she's the main host, the lead host. And she's got, she earned a co-host Co- name billing on the Tomorrow, on the Tomorrow show. show this year. Yeah. 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 She's doing incredible. And, um, who, oh my goodness, the um, brain freeze right now. Oh, Thea Trinidad was there, and who's Lena Vega? Selena Vega. And then in over in creative, you know, it's not just people oh, on no, camera. Weren't there? Aren't there people that are on like the buzz, the 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 bump, the WWE, the bump? Yes. So Evan Mack yeah. recently, he's on the bump. He's doing great. We're and there really, are a couple of producers, by the way, in NXT that came from After Buzz too. So Ryan Katz, who I think someday will be remembered as the Dusty Rhodes of his time like later wow. i think in another 20 or 30 years i think uh-huh. a lot of people are going to thank him uh-huh. he's just a cheerleader and super creative um 
and uh, now and Mark Donica also is a producer there, mm-hmm. and then Johnny Quasto. Uh, jo- yeah, Johnny, he's killing it. He's after Buzz, um, and and it's great because I'm so proud because the WWE, as you know, is one of the hardest places to to last at to yeah. succeed at, yeah. and all of the after buzzes not only succeed they revolutionize. I think that what Sonya Deville first openly gay female and actually first MMA fighter on the roster. I'm so proud of her. First MMA female. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I think of Kathy Keller, who's a Mensa student, Mm -hmm. and what she's doing, and I think of Thea Trinidad. Yeah, Kathy turned their... uh, The stuff Kathy did with their uh, online stuff completely changed the way they present themselves on on the YouTube channel. And and from what I hear, Hunter and Stephanie are just... They just go to Kathy. When they want someone they can trust, they go to Kathy. And now she's on NXT every week. They like... Kathy will handle it. But even like there was going to be a Brad Pitt thing they were th- close to talking to brad pitt about something they're like you know what let's send kathy. i think they did it yeah and let's send kathy I think kathy did the interview because they knew yeah. why kathy had the class and the acumen and the poise um well she's an after buzzer there you go so but it, and thea you know is i think is do, what she's doing on the mic i mean I, zelina vega is it, being called a female paul Heyman. she's a female paul Heyman, and and she's revolutionizing the role of a manager and i don't even female. i don't even know because i've known her for a long time too even separate from after buzz and then like you know the yeah. world's just kind of cross i don't think that people are aware of how hard and long what a grind she's worked mm-hmm. tirelessly tirelessly to be in the position that she's in four foot nothing yeah when you think about it and no she is and i mean incredible tr- trying to get tryouts no tryout oh here's a tryout oh we don't want you yeah. oh you look too much like yeah and then no and we we i remember having to work with her a lot on you know remaining patient you know maybe making some tweaks and some alterations mm-hmm. here and there but a, another great story of um Intestinal fortitude, as they would say in the 70s That's right. in wrestling. But, Testicular fortitude, as yes. mankind would say in the 90s. In the 90s. In the 90s. And uh, and then we have other, we have, we have a kid, Jason Eichler, who runs all of Hearst Digital. Mm-hmm. You know, we have um, a lot of kids out there that are now major executives in the business who actually, and, and they all come back and help, which is wonderful. And some of them still, um, I mean, I still look over all their contracts. Mm-hmm. I still negotiate a lot of their deals. You know, because when you're after Buzz, you're after Buzz for, for life. life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sean Wallman. Yep. X Pac is an after Buzz yeah. at the end of the day. He was our Terry Funk to ECW. Yeah, he was. Desperado. Desperado. He came on when he came on. Well, look. Uh, thank you for having me on, Sam. Thank you for being here. It's so, always such a blast. And I can't believe this is the first time. First time. That you've been in the studio because we built it, but I wired it after you left. And you know, but you know, so I this is done. this is the first time you've been in the functioning studio. And you know, because I just can't let it go. I listen to the show, but when I watch it, I get disappointed because we're not really showing mm-hmm. the size of the studio, all the different features. So yeah, you're not in, about in twenty. We're gonna come in and we're gonna add some more tech. Have you already thought about what? Because you, I'm sitting here asking you about what. It, the Kevin Undergaro, Maria Menounos universe is going to look more like. More mindful. That I'm going to be more mindful. And this, but you're 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 thinking about what you're going to do here. Yes. Yeah. So here, yeah, no. So here, I there's going to be some lighting changes. There has to be some ca- tech and camera changes. And there's other parts of the studio that need to be lit that aren't being used. Right. So we're going to make it so if you want to do. You know, maybe a one-on-one interview, Sam, but in easy chairs rather than this. Mm-hmm. You have some. We have some great places here. If you want to do the yeah. sneaker content, there's a place to do that. Not as everything well. has to be in the studio. No. Oh no, no. Excuse me. In this, this studio, area, Studio A. But studio then there's, a, there's a studio. studio B, I see studios. a Studio B, and I see a Studio C over there as well. And in Hot Dog, I don't like him being over there just. I want some kind of background. I want him to be right. I judged. See. I see. You can judge. Here's want, the thing. You know, I mean, it's a Kevinism. Every inch. Every inch. Every we inch. We fight for every inch. And you, you know, Sam, I always tell people, too, this is the time of the year to look back at what you did right, what you did wrong, and to start reflecting till January 1st. Like, what are the changes I'm going to make? And, and I always say start by organizing your life and your house these next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. But... The newest thing I've come up with is if you can just even think of one word that's going to kind of what, sum up what your new year will be. For me, last year was upgrade. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I upgraded my wardrobe. I upgraded my car. I upgraded my company. I upgraded my friends even. Like everything about me. So this year, I want to be more mindful. Marie's going to be more mindful. Like, I got let's my be word. more strategic. What's yours? Content. Content. So content. more content. More 
content. Just more content. Content initiative. So this is great. So probably, so that was the After Buzz way because we were just like, it was like, no, we're going to do after shows for every single after show. Right. So it was all about content. Content. Now it's, th- now let's be more strategic. Right. You start to scale back. You so start let's, to, yeah. Let's, so la- this year was about upgrades. So we, uh, so we did that much content, but we upgraded. Our quality went up and even our YouTube likes went up like something like, 200 percent yeah dislikes went down so now and now next year for me mindful so a little bit more strategic more mindful about everything i'm doing so for you we're in a content, content. phase i love it that's yeah. great that's yeah great. we're in a content phase more right content. now i we have to talk off air because there's some other things that that i want to see you do well let's talk off air and i'll leave you on this there are two movies that uh buried deep down inside contain i mean you talk about like vince knowing everything and all these life lessons being in wrestling two films that you put in front of me and said, I mean, because, you know, the way some people are with books, the way some people <laughs> yeah, are no, with yeah. philosophies, no, it's no, a, no, everything you need is in this movie. And there's two movies in different parts of my life, but it will hit you different ways depending on where you are, but they'll both do it. And I didn't expect either one of them. One, and this is the most important one. Yes, yeah, this is Dianetics. You, you, already know, you already know which one it yes, is. Yes, of course. It's the Count of Monte Cristo. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. That's where, uh, 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 you know, where 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 a man gets. Uh, I mean, he is he is baby facing. By the way, the count. He learns to baby. Yes, he and learns no sell. in baby facing. No sell. Okay, you're gonna lock me in the tower. No problem. They're gonna ignore him. Oh, that's my punishment. Because I think it might be my ally. Right. Right. What is written there, Sam? I have it. I have it hanging in my <laughs> in my house. What is it? Uh neglect becomes our ally it's so important so what is the meaning though neglect becomes our ally means like oh you're just going to leave me alone to my own devices so you're not going to you're not going to pay gonna attention pay no attention to you you're nothing you're a loser you're you're scum you're just perfect whatever. well then i'll just okay i just build over here oh, okay no 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 i'm fine i just build over here don't worry about me you you keep doing what you're doing i just i'll just build over here and then we'll just see what happens <laughs> It won't be a problem. Nothing's gonna happen because you're a loser. You're nothing. I'm a loser. What am I gonna do? Learn to sword fight and throw you off the mountain? <laughs> no. That's moment. No. And then oh. the second movie is Mr. Majestic. It is. You knew it. It's Mr. Majestic because sometimes all you want to do, all you want to do, is, this is a Charles Bronson movie. Written by Elmore Leonard. Written by Elmore Leonard. Which, uh, no one knows one of his more. It's the most underrated film he's ever made. It's about a man, and I was so happy because we brought it up on the air on Sirius, and because Jim got into a Charles Bronson thing, and I was like, "Oh, there's this movie. It means everything. It's the greatest thing ever." And he was like, "Is it this? Is it that?" Because we're talking about Death Wish. He was like, "What, Mr. Majestic?" I was like, "Yes, Mr. Majestic," because it's about a man. Charles Bronson plays him. All he wants to do is be there with the love of his life. Planting his watermelons. That's it. Jess, a watermelon planter. He's got his girl by his side. He's got a very simple life. But the people, <laughs> they won't stop fucking with him. <laughs> they keep screwing with him. Yeah. So what does he have to do? Has to. He has to go on a murderous <laughs> rampage and just destroy everything, level everything in his path. So at the end, he can just get back to planting his watermelon. So don't you love the end, the the, the guy, Al Letieri, who plays Salazzo from Godfather, mm-hmm. who's like the quintessential bully. He's even got the Bluto body. Right. The big, fat, like, mean, angry. like, And he's tortured Charles Bronson the whole movie. Right. And at the very end, Bronson's got him pinned down. And Bronson's last line to him is, hey, Frank, come on, let's finish it. Next line. I've got work to do. <laughs> he just wanted to go back he just wants and to pick go his back. melons. And uh, with the lesson there, and it, you see that the antagonist at the time, Sam, yeah, is now it hits him. Oh, what no. did I do? This I, maniac. I didn't. This is all. None of this had to happen. <laughs> yeah, he just. Wanted, I wasn't equipped yeah, for this. Yeah. The lesson is that you should find something you can do in life. <laughs> That's it. That doesn't hurt anybody. That you can just do. But you should never allow anybody to stop you from doing it. Doing it. it. That's it. That was the lesson. I mean, even the cop, remember the police officer goes, go home. Pick (laughs) pick your melon. They're laughing at him. And then at the end, even they're in shock when he's like, oh, my God, what did you do? 
I told you I just wanted to pick my melons. <laughs> That's it. They wouldn't let me. That's oh, all I, I got a melon to crop do. to get in. That's it. You've got a melon crop to get in in all, 20. At the, at the end so of, do I. At the end of the day, Kevin, all guys like me and you want to do is pick our watermelons. You know, Sam, it's funny. You you, you so are both those movies because I think if you would own it, it was never about, like, I, I know you. Like, that's the thing I wanted to even explain to some of your fans or even some of your people who worked on that show. Like, I was, we're intimate friends in the non-sexual way. So, but in the way of like, I know everything that's in your mind. You told me everything. And never was there this grand plan yeah, but, <laughs> to become the big do you know what I mean to take everyone down it was like literally Kevin I, I love broadcasting sometimes the, sometimes the legend's better than the reality it's not it, you know what if you're a baby face but you wanted to pick your melons that's all I wanted to do and you melons. got fucked with I, and you yeah. just kept picking your melons you Look. stuck to it and look what happened and the melon crop came in it's okay if the world thinks I'm a heel that's true sometimes sometimes the legend is it better than reality well, I like it you said it the other day we were talking about Ric Flair and another world champion from the era, mm -hmm. and how Rick the Ultimate Heel is in what he's in hip hop videos. <laughs> yes, <and> still. <laughs> yes, he's the man. Winning. <laughs> he is as iconic as he's ever been. He's as relevant as he's ever been, and the other people just aren't. They just aren't. You Ric Flair. It, you know why? Because <laughs> all Ric Flair wants to do is pick his melons. His melons. He his just, version. He just wants to nature. That's it. All just he wants to do is be the full nature time boy forever. If you let Ric Flair just be the nature That's boy, it. everything all will be well. will be fine, and he'll be friends with everybody. Just let him be the nature boy. <laughs> if you go around and you try to screw with people, and you try to mess with people, and you get threatened by people, that's when it's not going to work. No. But just just be nature. Just Nate. Just be Nate. Just be Nate. Kevin, I appreciate the time. That was fun. Thanks, Sam. And uh, yeah, well, Chipmas. Merry Chipmas. Merry Chipmas. I know you're a big advocate for Chip. You got five styluses. You might as well use them. See you next time on Sam Roberts Now.